everything feels a little overwhelming at the moment. I have mistakenly allowed myself to be sucked in again by news channels. You know, once a day I'll just click onto Google News on my phone and skim the headlines. And then I might watch one video on YouTube, an update to do with, I don't know, interest rates or financial changes that our wonderful new Labour government are thinking of bringing in. And then my whole YouTube feed is full of it. And I click on too many of the wrong videos at the moment. But there are so many potential changes coming which could affect me like everybody else that you feel you need to keep tabs on what's going on so trying to plan ahead when so much can change I mean we've got we know that the energy bills are going to go up again first of October we know that's happening and there's all sorts of other things being thrown around which we probably won't know about until the budget at the end of October. Like, are they going to cut the 25% discount for single people on council tax? That's going to have a huge knock-on effect for me. And what's happening with interest rates? What about... Um, what about this, this pence per mile? I mean, some people say they're not going to... They're not going to do it. Others are saying, I, I was reading something in on the news yesterday and they were talking about it like it was a foregone conclusion that it was going to be 15 pence per mile and it was coming in now. And I hate the clickbaity headlines. It really irritates me how the newspapers can throw in a headline. Knowing that people won't look at the article and find out what's actually being said because when you click on these horrible headlines and then you read the article, the article says something completely different to the headline but it's about them just getting the clicks, just getting the likes and that really irritates me because most of the headlines that you see at the moment regarding government changes and finances, the headlines are wrong, they're deliberately misleading. So I try to, you know, keep a very balanced view of it. This pence per mile thing hasn't come in yet. And they're going to have to do quite a lot of infrastructure changes to make that be a thing. Because I don't, there were two suggestions. The one was obviously cameras on all the roads, but there are thousands and thousands of roads with no cameras so how are they going to track your mileage they'll only be able to track you on the major roads at the moment so that infrastructure would take with the way the government is at the moment probably years to put into place the other one was that they you, you pay your mileage based on when you take your car in and your mileage is registered at your MOT so each year you would be billed based on your mileage, based on your MOT mileage, which would make a lot more sense. Um, but again, I would imagine the infrastructure for that will take some time. Then, of course, they're talking about, you know, car tax instead and changing the car tax. I mean, if they if they did a pence per mile. Can I afford to go and do hikes anymore? Because that's unnecessary driving that's going to cost me extra money. Because I've already got to put the petrol in to get there. When am I going to go be able to go down and see my parents? This article that said that they're bringing in the pence per mile thing now was a woman who lived up near where I live and has to go down to London for family. And what she gets, she's going to have to cancel Christmas because she can't afford the round trip if it's 15 pence per mile. But these are figures and things being bandied around that haven't been put into place yet. So her saying, well, I'm going to have to cancel Christmas because I'm not going to be able to afford to go because of 15 pence per mile. But nothing's in place yet. And I can't imagine that it will be in place. But if they did bring it in, when am I going to get to see my family? Because my family live the other side of London. And at the moment, I go down there four times a year. That's pretty much all I can manage because petrol costs money. 
So is that going to have to change? Um, the hiking is going to have to change because I can't get to the places that I want to go to. Nowhere really is within walking distance for me that's worthy of an actual hike. There are some woodlands and some parks and things, but I can't be doing the same boring circular walk every week. The whole point is that I get out of this town, not stay in it. I want to get as far away from it as possible. So there's the impact of that. There's the impact of, you know, the, 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 the cutting of the winter fuel allowance for elderly people. And then you get the YouTube videos coming up saying this is a stealth tactic by the Labour government to, um, because they need to thin out the old people. So if they take away the winter fuel allowance, um, and there was one article that said that they projected 4,000 elderly people will die this winter and that knocks 4,000 people off the NHS lists and off the state pension and needing other benefits. And it sounds awful, but, you know, you think, well, why else would they want to cut all these allowances for elderly people when the fuel's about to go up? They want them all dead, don't they? Because they're a burden. And your brain starts to believe the rhetoric. And it's particularly annoying when you realise that people like Rachel Reeves are claiming back over £4,000 a year on their uh, energy for their second homes. And yet they're cutting £300 winter fuel allowances for elderly people. I don't suppose their parents will be dying of cold this winter. Anyway, so my brain is going all over the place with things at the moment, and I don't doubt for one minute that your brain is doing the same thing. And so I'm going to have to put back in place my no news rule, because it's, um, it's reaching that point where I can end up becoming like my mother, one of those ranty people. And uh, you don't want to be doing that. It doesn't help anything. Me getting angry about it, doesn't change anything. Uh, it's not going to change what rules come into place. And we'll have to wait for the end of October to know what's going to go on in terms of the budget anyway. But if, you're, if you are finding everything that you're hearing in the news at the moment overwhelming, stop watching the news. Stop reading it. Cut it out of your life. Give yourself a mental break from it because it won't help. If they're going to cut the winter fuel allowance, they're going to cut it. If they're going to take away the 25% discount for single people on council tax, they're going to do it. And no matter how much you worry about it or get angry about it, it's probably not going to change anything. So give your mental health a break and stop looking at the news. Stop looking at the clickbaity headlines. Stop falling for information that is uh, not true yet, things that haven't been brought into place. Stop reading about the speculation. Until things are put into place, it's not happened. And you need to take a step back from that because it's not going to do you any favours. Focus on what you can change. Focus on living the best life you can. Embrace what you can within your life and try and filter out the bad stuff because you getting worried about it isn't going to change a thing. Anyway, that's a very short-termism way of coping for now and until we get to, I suppose, the end of October and the budget comes in, we don't know what's actually going to happen and then it will all kick off. But at least I'm pleased to say that uh, the Labour Party is rapidly falling out of favour with everyone. That's the one small glimmer of joy that we have in all this. But no government is popular. Anyway, <laughs> needed to get that off my chest. I needed to say that. I'm now going to stop watching the news. I'm going to cut out the YouTube videos that do me no favours and I'm going to coast through for a bit because I can feel that it's starting to drag me down and that's never a good thing. So please do the same thing. Cut it out, 
don't discuss it with people because it's very incendiary and try to streamline your life a little bit because there's a lot of rubbish going on out there that is doing you absolutely no favours whatsoever. So there's my little bit of advice for this week and I will speak to you soon. Look after yourselves and above all look after your mental health right now because everyone is losing their minds.